Hello everyone and welcome. Today I'm going to show you how to use the Avoni data table. So this video is all about learning the basics of the Avoni data table, how to use the data table, how to customize the data table, how to make sure it's functional for your needs inside a screen flow. So let's jump right in and let's create the screen element. First step, adding a label on the screen. Now, let's drag the Avoni data table. Today's use case is to display a list of opportunities using the Avoni data table, and we will dive into specific features to customize and build the data table you want. So we just drag the Avoni data table. Let's open the component builder. That's extremely useful, powerful, because from there you get access to all the settings and properties to customize the Avoni data table. You get a preview of the data table as well. On this right panel, properties to customize the data table your way. The first thing you need to do to set up your data table, you need to scroll down and go on the data source. The data source section is where you can connect your Salesforce data with the data table. You have access to the manual data entry if you want to create a data table manually without taking any Salesforce information. Using a variable data source, it's useful if you're using get records collection from Salesforce. And you can also create your own query from there. That's the one I'm looking to use. Query is extremely useful because you don't need to create first a get records collection. You have some benefits of using it. If you want to display and manage thousands, hundreds of thousands of records, you need to use the query. Standard variable get records collection, you won't be able to go over 50,000 records. So as I said, it's to display a list of opportunity. I need to select the Salesforce object I'd like to use on the data table. Now I selected the object. As you can see on the left side, I have all the fields related to the opportunity object. And that's extremely easy to drag and drop a field into the data table to build your data table. So let's drag the name and you can add other fields, account ID, Let's, dra let's drag the amount. Stage. Probability. While you're dragging the fields, you have all the columns created here. That's easy to select a column like name. It's easy to adjust this column. For example, for the name of the opportunity, you may want to linkify it. So users will be able to click on the name to go directly to the related opportunity page. Let's say you like to make this field editable or even filterable, even searchable. You can hide or show this field. Save. Now all the name are uh, Linkify, you can click on it. And that's also great to get a data table preview while you're building it. Let's do the same for the account ID. You may want to use custom label. Let's say account name instead. Linkify, editable, featureable, save. So you can really customize, fine tune each column and how you like to display each column. For example, probability, you may want to uh, select probability and instead of displaying this field using a person field, let's display using a progress bar, show value, and you can customize variant theme thickness of the progress bar. And you will get a result like this. Again, it's all about visual aspect on the data table. If you want, there is another possibility to adjust settings for all the columns this time. 
you have this button at the top, all column settings. So if you want to make all columns searchable, filterable, sortable, you can adjust the settings that will be applied automatically to all columns into the data table. Now, if you'd like to add row action on the right side, you can add column. And for the type of column, you select action. And from there, you create your row action. So you can say change owner, edit. You can have delete, for example, or any custom action you'd like to add. Now I have my row action buttons with option. I set up that on the data table. You also have access to other options on the data table like group by. Let's say you'd like to group by stage, for example. You can group by a specific field and you will get this type of data table. Filters, you can add additional filters. Let's say you'd like to add a filter, but you don't want to display the filter on the data table. You can select any fields to be act as a filter. So users will be able to filter by this specific field and you don't need, and you don't have to display this filter on the data table. You can make a field searchable without displaying it. I'm thinking about number, uh, specific information you don't, you just don't want to display on the data table. Next, you also have access to other options like pagination. Let's say you have a lot of data and you'd like to add a pagination on the data table. You can say show pagination and only show me the first 10 records and then you get pagination. You can even customize the pagination bar, center, right, left, and customize if you'd like to have first button icon name, first button label, and the same for the next, and previews, and last. That's for the pagination. Let's dive into header. Let's say you'd like to add a title, opportunity list, all opportunities. So that's really to define what you'd like to add on at the top for the header. You can add an, you can add an icon. Is joined, set an icon size name if you want. And you can also add button action on the header. So let's say I'd like to create a new button action. That's for the header. Now, something I didn't mention about filters, as you can see, you have filters right there. So you can say, okay, let's say, I'd like to have all fields featureable. You have specific option for filter. If you're expanding that, you can select the type of how, you can select how you'd like to display filters. If you want to display the filters in a horizontal way, or using a popover, we'll click here, or even better, using a side panel. So you can select panel and automatically you get access to the panel. And you also have access to specific settings for side panel if you want to position the, the side panel on the left or on the right. If you want to have a toggle button, if you want to make it close by default or hide the button for filters. Now, regarding, you know, the fine tuning, the look and feel of the data table, if you want to remove unnecessary margin, you can find right there. And also at the top, you can click on pull to boundary, select top, select left and right, and select bottom. Now, if you have thousands of records on the data table and you'd like to activate automatically the infinite scrolling, that's easy. You just need to click on this button. Automatically, your data table will display data using infinite scrolling. So that's really for the visual aspects of the data table. 
That's the basics of the Avonii data table. The last thing I'd like to show you is the interactions. When I'm talking about interactions, it's all about the action you created, like raw action, for example. Those raw action. You created change owner, edit, delete. But right now, those are not functional. If you select or if your user are selecting change owner, nothing will happen. The same for edit, delete. That's the same for this new button at the top. It's set up, but it's not functional because I didn't create an interaction. And that's where the interactions tab come into play. From there, you can define interactions to make the data table fully functional. Let's start with a basic interaction on the header action. So add header action. You select the target name. Make sure to create the action first. Otherwise, this list will be empty. You select new. And now, OK, when my users are pressing this new button, what I'd like to trigger, what I'd like this button do for my users. And you have access to various types of interaction. I will not dive into all of them. Maybe the most important one, like flow navigation, if you want to navigate to a next or previous screen. If you want to show a toast message, if you want to open another flow as a model box, open flow dialog, if you want to fire confetti, if you want to export data as Excel or CSV file. But here, for this new button, I want my users to have access to the model box to create a new opportunity. So the type of interaction I will select is navigate, to navigate on Salesforce. And now I need to specify where I like my users to navigate. For the page reference type, I need to select the object page, and you need to select the opportunity object. And finally, the action name, you'd like to create a new opportunity. If needed, you can even pre-fill value. Let's say you'd like to assign by default a pre-fill value. That's possible by adding an item. And also target, if you want to specify the target, if you want this new model to open in a current window or in a new window, that's where the target can be useful. Save, and now, the new button is fully functional. Regarding the interaction, one essential piece is missing here. Because I activated inline editing for specific fields, but I need to set up an interaction to be sure that the information would be saved for my users when they are using the inline editing on the Avonii data table. That's where the save interaction comes into play. You click Add Save. And you just need to select the update records interaction. Save. That's it. You're done. All the information will be saved automatically. Finally, you also have style. It's more for fine tuning the look and feel of the Avenue data table. If you want to customize the data table to really match the branding, you have access to various style settings to customize, for example, the background color of the data table for the header. Uh, I will use one I really like to use is border. And you can set a border to one pixel, style solid, color. So you can see now it's adding a border. So you can select gray or maybe that gray. Reduce three pixel. So now I have a border with a radius. Uh, what I can do, add a border. I will just apply border radius here. And footer as well. OK. Now I'm done. I just created in maybe 10 minutes, a fully working data table to display a list of all opportunities that is functional with specific action. That's the basics. I will do other video with, uh, regarding the data table with more deep dive about specific features. But if you want to learn the basics about how to set up easily the Avonii data table, you're at the right place. Now, 
once you've done click done let's save the flow okay we just need to add this flow on the page and that's the last step okay let's add now the flow we just created on this page so i will open app builder drag the flow component and select the flow i'd like to display and now it's right there we get our just created data table fully functional if you want to search for an opportunity you can search for an opportunity if you want to do mass update you can select multiple opportunity and update a lookup for example save let's create new to create a new opportunity perfect it's working fine users can now create a new opportunity from there if we'd like to use the side panel click on this button and we can fine-tune the data we'd like to display right from there using the side panel with filters you just added on the side panel so everything is working fine and i have now access to a powerful data table i just set up in less than 15 minutes and that's really to show you the basics of the avoni data table and how you can use the avoni data table to display any data you want within minutes without having to custom code or reinvent the wheel let me know if you have any question in the comment section below and stay tuned for other videos have a good day bye bye